Echo windows provide standard locations that we place the transducer on the anterior chest wall that allow for areas of the heart to be seen. And in this lecture, we're going to be looking at the various positions we place the transducer in order to obtain various views of the heart. Okay, now these echo windows, why there's some standard ones, is because they allow optimal views to acquire bright and clear images. So if you look here, we can see that there are four main ones. There's others that exist, but these are the four ones that we'll discuss in more detail. And we'll look at each of these windows, and then within each window, there are various views. So here we have the number one is parasternal, okay? And this is on the left side, usually between uh, the third and fourth intercostal space. We have the parasternal on the left side of the sternum. So here it is number one, and it's this one here, okay? And we put the transducer there, and we can get uh, a great view of the heart along the long axis. So here's a parasternal long axis view uh, that we can get. And from this, you can see that we have a number of uh, different areas we can see. So remember, the transducer is this one here, at least the orientation marker. So remember the where the marker sits, okay? And it's also this one here. So that's the transducer. So notice on the right side. And that way, you can think of this, the right side of the picture, okay? And then of this one, this would be the left, and this would be the left of this, okay? And because of that, you can see here that the right ventricular outflow track is this one here, okay? The aorta is this one. Aortic valve is this here. The left ventricle on the left side, okay? Here, this is the descending aorta. Uh, we also have the left atrium, the mitral valve, and as you can see, they kind of match up. So that's kind of how the views of the image looks, and we'll look at those in much more detail. So that's the parasternal long axis view, but there's a short axis view. And then within the short axis view, we have different levels. So there's a number of different things we'll look at. So that's one window, okay? And there's four main windows we're gonna be looking at. There's the apical window, which is this one here, number two, okay? So as you can see, here's one, this is two. And on the left side, so the L is for left, so the left side, at the apex, usually at the point of maximal uh, uh, impulse or PMI, the apical impulse, that's where we put the transducer. Then there's the subcostal, okay, so this is number three, so this one down here. And that, we can get a few views in that area, both the coronal and sagittal, and there's a number of uh, great things we can see in that uh, view as well. And then there's the suprasternal, this one number four, that we put up here um, above the sternal notch. And so that's a, another view we can do where we're putting the transducer and we're looking down from above. And we can see the uh, aortic arch branches, okay, these ones here, as well as the left atrium, the right main, uh, right pulmonary artery as well can be seen there, okay. Uh, so there's a number of things that we'll look at, but these are the windows. So areas where we put the transducer to get a great image of the heart. And remember, with the transducer, you can tilt it, rotate it to get these various views, okay? So I want you to think of windows, and then, and these are the four windows that we discussed, so the four windows. There are others, but these are the main ones you should know. And then within the windows, there are various views, okay? And one view here is the long axis view in that parasternal. So you can think of this one as the parasternal long axis view, okay? That's only one. There's also parasternal uh, short axis view. And then within that, you may have the aortic level, the mitral level, you may have the papillary muscle level and so forth, okay? So as you can see, there are the windows and then within the windows, there are multiple views and then different levels. Okay, all to give us uh, great views of these structures within the heart. Okay, so let's just uh, look at this. So the standard echo windows, we mentioned parasternal, apical, subcostal, and suprasternal. We looked at those. They provide multiple views, as we mentioned, of the heart and the related structures. Okay, the valves and everything within the heart. They permit good penetration. And that's the main reason we have these. These standard windows allow for good penetration of the ultrasound. Because if you're putting the ultrasound right on, say, a rib or a bone and not between an intercostal space uh, or within an intercostal space, then you may have pretty much reflection, okay? Meaning that if you imagine this to be bone here, okay, from a rib, 
All right, here's another one. And then you're taking your transducer and you're putting it right over that. What's going to happen is that the ultrasound waves, imagine them. So let's put our transducer here, okay? And it's going to hit the bone and reflect right back, okay? Meaning that you don't have good penetration. So we want to allow good penetration so that the sound waves can get and reflect at the structures within the heart. Okay, so this is really good. And why we want to have standard views is because it allows for comparison with other studies, whether it's the same patient, okay, and looking at it again or amongst others. So we want to make sure that uh, we have standard views that we're going through. And there tends to be a process. We tend to go from the parasternal view and then to the uh, within multiple views within that and then to the apical and so forth okay so i'll walk you through that as we go through a number of these lectures so again in this lecture let's just recap we're looking at echo windows and these windows are standard locations we place the transducer on the chest wall okay they allow for great acquisition of bright and clear images and that's why we have these standard locations okay tte stands for transthoracic echocardiogram so meaning a echo that we perform on the patient's chest okay uh, there's transesophageal where we go through the esophagus but that's not what we're looking at here so of these standard echo windows we mentioned four of them we mentioned the parasternal we mentioned the apical the subcostal and suprasternal and i've marked them there so you can see where we place the transducer on the patient's chest these provide great views of the heart the related structures the valves the endocardium maybe there's evidence of a thrombus so things that we can see so a lot that we can get from the echo these windows allow for great penetration of the ultrasound waves so we don't have a lot of that reflected waves and we get good images and they allow for <coughs> excuse me standard comparison with other studies okay so it's always good to have a standardized approach that you approach every patient in a systematic process just as we went through with our ekgs the same thing applies here okay well that's the end of this lecture i hope you learned something now just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available so again if you go to our website www.ekg.md okay so this is our website and what you'll notice is that if you go to the ekg course here okay you'll find stuff that's separate so notice that we have a number of topics practice material lectures a way for you to contribute and this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on youtube there's another hundred more than 100 about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book so it's over 30 hours of video now there's a number of practice material that i continue to upload there okay we'll have practice questions coming soon uh, so all of that's available again this is separate from all the free material that you get already okay so this is more high yield stuff this is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at mayo clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um, i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket ekg reference okay this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows uh, and this is really nice it has every code as you saw earlier laid out there very small pocket guide available 
I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who is the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic, in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself um, 25% off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.